Welcome, I'm the Deadwood Jedi. This is going to be another Raid Shadow Legends video and a continuation of our step-by-step -step series. We've done Clan Boss, we've looked at Spider, now we're going to take on the next dungeon that is, I think, the most important once you finish Spider, especially for progression. It's probably not the most valuable of all the dungeons, to be honest, anymore. It used to be, and it's kind of fallen in favor. But there is one set that you can only get from here, and that's speed sets. And of course, I'm talking about Dragon. You really do have to do it because you do need a certain amount of speed gear on your account. There's no real substitute for it, right? We have other sets that do similar things, but none that do it at the level that a speed set does. And you don't want to rely on getting divine sets from Arena. That's just not going to pan out for anybody. So with that said, you really need to spend some time in Dragon, as much as we don't necessarily like it. As much as there is a lack of quality sets in this dungeon at this point, it's still important to do. And so, of course, this becomes number two on my list because when you're progressing, getting the speeds you need is usually the biggest hurdle of, of all of them to get to. And so this is what we're doing. Now, this account has already opened 25, so it's not unlocked. And we're not working with, you know, trash champions, right? It's not an all epic type of team. I have a lot at my disposal. At this point, it becomes about making those runs as fast as possible, as consistent as possible. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. But as with spiders, when I covered that, we're going to be talking a little bit about how the approach to this goes, right? It's not just about, you know, using these specific champions in this specific way. I can show you a million videos of how to do that. We're going to talk a little bit more about, you know, the approach that we take to this. And hopefully that means, well, no matter what champions you have on your account, you're going to be able to take something from this video and apply it to your account. So anyway, that's what we're going to be doing today. So let's jump in. So you can see we have stage 25 unlocked already, and it is something that is completable. But as you can see with here, the time is 3 minutes and almost 30 seconds. It's not very fast. What basically is happening on, in this account, there are plenty of good champions, right? So it's kind of a brute force approach here. What I want to take is more of a surgical strike, right? I want to be a little bit more uh, specific in how I'm approaching this so I can get through the waves quickly, so I can get through the boss quickly and really reduce the time. The slower the time, the lower the time, I should say, the faster the time, the less time we need to spend farming to get the same results. And we can improve the account a lot faster. When you're early on and you're trying to get to stage 20, it's the same kind of approach. We want to be as surgical in our you know delivery of our damage as we can be and by doing that we're able to reduce the time that we spent by a lot because there's certain thresholds you need you need to be able to get the certain speeds to unlock certain clan boss teams or to unlock certain arenas builds right and so you need to get the kind of gear uh, appropriate for those levels and so the faster you can do that the better it's going to be for you uh, and it should also improve your success rate on these things right now obviously this team works right this is enough you know if you can if he's happy with three minutes and 30 seconds we can let that run but i think we can drop that down to a, at least half the speed and still get the same kind of results that's got to be an improvement right and so that's what we're going to do in our approach here dragon team and we're going to take this team that was doing four minutes and drop the speeds all the way down to about one minute which is pretty amazing it's actually kind of faster than my own dragon 25 team which i'm you know a little sad about but this is kind of the magic of having somebody like theodore on this squad he's absolutely amazing when it comes to dealing with the boss himself because he's gonna place poisons and activate them enabling him to do a lot of damage in a very short amount of time um so he's really really strong for this now the trick with this one was the waves were so slow. We, were, we weren't, what do you call it, speed tuned for it. We weren't prepping ourselves. We weren't very strategic in how we were taking down the waves. What I've done now is I brought in Seer, who obviously is an amazing champion, right? We've even got some, you know, uh, what do you call this, blessings on him. So she's going to be actually really, really strong in this. And so the only thing I needed to do after that was make sure I had enough buffs out there for Seer to nuke down each of these waves as fast as possible. In order to do that, I brought in two interesting champions, I think, for this. One is Ghostborn. Ghostborn's absolutely amazing. Whether we're talking about Dragon or we're talking about Fire Knight, he's going to be one of the best debuffers because he's going to be able to place an AoE, decreased defense, and doesn't need accuracy for it because it cannot be resisted. On top of that, he gives everybody an increased attack buff. So that's one other buff for Seer to use to nuke down the waves. In addition to, to Ghostborn, we're also going to have Archmage Helmet. 
who, as we all know, does a lot for our team. Brings an increased speed buff, uh, crit rate, crit uh, crit rate, crit damage, and an increased speed. I think those are the three that he brings, which is fantastic. So we're getting a lot of buffs out there. And on top of that, I put Renegade in a, uh, what do you call it? A in a shield set. So that shield set is gonna give us yet another buff for Seer to pull down and nuke these waves. We're actually probably have more buffs than we need in all truth of the matter, but it doesn't hurt to have more. It only hurts us if we have too few and we wanna be able to do this 100% of the time and we can. So this is gonna be really effective going through. Now, once we get to the boss, anybody can die. Everybody else should die except for Theodore. That's actually helpful because then it's just Theodore taking turns and using animations. There you can see, quick wave nuke now on the second wave obviously we have to go through all our progressions so we can get the reset there from renegade and we do we get the increased speed crit rate crit damage shield buff attack buff and we nuke those waves down we're through in under 20 seconds which is insanely fast and then once we get to the dragon obviously it's all about getting those poisons out that's really all i care about doing so i just need theodore to take as many turns as possible and this is actually somewhere where Archmage Helmet comes in handy, giving us an extra increased speed buff, so we keep that up for the full fight. That's actually useful. But you can see, the turns from all of our other champions can take a little bit of time. That's not really what we need. We get a nuke in from Seer. That doesn't hurt us. It's definitely a good thing to have. But at this point, I just want Theodore to take more turns, and you'll see it speed up once everybody else dies, if they die at some point, right? There goes Archmage. Seer should be going down pretty shortly here. Um, Ghostborn's still around. That's fine. But as soon as the rest of them die, now all of a sudden Theodore takes multiple turns, activates those poisons to deal even more damage, places more poisons out, activates them again, deal more damage, and now it's wrap. And this is actually one of my slowest runs doing this, going at a minute 12 here. So you can see, depending on what you're bringing to the table, it can be really effective as far as getting through this. And this is how you want to build your teams, right? Be very strategic in your approach to the waves. Now, I had to speed tune this very specifically, so that meant I had to make sure everybody was going faster than Seer and that she would be, you know, her turns would come at the right point. We also had to make sure Seer was fast enough so that she would be able to take a second turn on that second wave. So you can see here, I got Theodore, 240, Renegades, 184, slowest. We just needed to reset the skills, right? Archmage 235, Seer 197, Ghostborn 232. And in order to those three champions, Ghostborn, Archmage, and Theodore are all fast so that they will be able to take those double turns. They all go before Seer and they take a second turn. Now, Seer at 197, actually typically a little fast for where you would normally put her. Normally you'd try to get her about 180 or so. And the reason why, this is interesting enough, is because of her masteries. And I think this is really important to kind of consider when building your champions is these masteries can have a big effect. And if we look at Seer's masteries, we'll see we have one here, Whirlwind of Death, where we increase our speed by six for every enemy killed by the champion up to 18. So once we kill three people, she's got an extra 18 speed on. So she's going at 197 with that extra 18 speed. She's really going at about 215, I wanna say, uh, speed. Now 215 speed's pretty fast for sure, right? Is that right, 215? I think that's correct. Yeah, 215's pretty fast. But this is why I need to make sure everybody else was faster than that, right? To ensure that they go before her to set up those buffs, which we need. I'd actually messed up a couple times on this and we didn't have enough buffs out. We weren't killing that second wave and it was really slowing down our run. So just by speed tuning a little bit, we can get some really good results. And the same thing you do with Spider, Ice Golems, Fire Knight, getting the speeds in order so that you know what's happening when is really important. Even if we can take some masteries, right? Like we could easily put things like Arcane Celerity on her or even Rapid Response. It wouldn't hurt our run here because of the way we're doing it, but we still need to speed tune how we're setting it up. Now, one of the other things is our masteries were a little bit messed up, right? We were coming down kind of a weird, weird path and taking some of these things. We want to make sure that we're taking Heart of Glory, that we're taking Ruthless Ambush, uh, that we're taking Bring It Down. The idea is, oh, and of course, can't forget, but we also want to take Kill Streak. And the idea, of course, is we're really only getting one attack on these enemies, right? That's what Seer does, is one big nuke. And with these waves, we don't want to waste time and get multiple attacks in there. So we just want to maximize that first hit every time. And in order to do that, we want things like Heart of Glory, where we have full HP. We want things like Ruthless Ambush that does more damage on that first hit. These little things are going to add up to make our first attack, that big one, effective. Now, a lot of people take taking Helm Smasher. I can't criticize this. It's good against bosses 
where, you know, part half the time you're going to do extra damage. But at stage 25, that's not actually going to do any more damage for us. And for me, I'd rather make sure that we have a steady, consistent approach through the waves. And so I'm going to take Flawless Executioner so I always have this extra crit damage. If you want Helm Smasher half the time and half the time not, that's going to give you a little variance in your run. And I don't prefer to have that. I prefer to have steady, consistent runs. And that's why I take Flawless Executioner. Now, if you use your Seer in other areas like Doom Tower, for instance, where sometimes you just need more damage, then Flawless Ex or then Helm Smasher might be a solid option for you. But if you want consistency in your runs, I really recommend taking Flawless Executioner instead. So as we look at the team and how I've built it, you can see we've got Seer here, as I said, at 197 speed. 285 crit damage is pretty high. Obviously, those numbers can always be bumped up. All we need for her is crit damage and the appropriate speed and enough accuracy to strip any enemy debuffs that we want. Having 325 accuracy is pretty solid. In fact, I have an accuracy chest on her right now. We don't need HP. We don't need attack. We don't need defense. All I really need is is the right amount of accuracy and crit damage now obviously you know if you're using her in other areas building her with sustain isn't a bad thing but for this particular team in fact most of these dungeon teams having her die early is advantageous for us so she doesn't take any turns in this case having an accuracy chest on her helps lower down the survivability while increasing her accuracy right which is only going to be helpful for us so that's kind of how i have her built right here and i think it's very effective and then we have the next really key port part of this team in Theodore the Savant. Theodore has 246 speed, right? 297 accuracy and also with a lot of sustain in a regen set. Now, one of the reasons why I like this for Theodore and I would do the same type of build if I had a Battle Kazar who I use for my teams or another kind of AoE poisoner like maybe an Urogrim, right? We want this person to be able to continue to put out poison. So going fast is helpful and very important as well as having enough accuracy to land the debuffs. On top of that, we just want to sustain as much as possible. We don't want this champion dying. So things like regen set, immortal set, even bolster sets are really, really helpful for us as well as building in resistance. Now I wasn't able to build resistance into this Theodore. We don't have the gear for that with this account, right? to have the resistance and the accuracy and the sustain and the speed, it takes really good gear. And we're just not there with this yet, but we don't necessarily need it either because of the speed of this run, because of the way that Theodore has been working in both uh, Dragon and Ice Golem, which you'll see in another video, we don't really need it, right? We're able to survive without it. And due to that, this is gonna be really effective. He's gonna be able to survive, sustain the hits and still heal himself up in time. And with his speed buff due to his skills, He's actually able to kind of keep moving over and over and over again. Really good champion for this. Probably the best, honestly. Next, we have Renegade, who is crucial to this comp. Obviously, you can use other turn meter or cooldown reduction champions, but Renegade is going to be really good because I have her in a shield set. That's just another buff. I can put that on anybody, but obviously, Renegade's not there to deal damage for us, so it doesn't really matter. And you can see the stats. We don't have a whole lot going on. Now, I do have accuracy. I do have crit rate on her, but she doesn't have a ton of attack. I try to build that up as much as I can. One of the things you don't see, though, is a lot of sustain on her. Again, I want her to die. That only helps us out. Now, the 184 speed, I just need to make sure she slows in this comp. She has to go after Seer does, and that's just going to help us set up for that second wave. That's really the big part with her kit. To be fair, you could have her go first as well, but she either needs to go first, in which case on that second wave and on the first wave, you're going to utilize a different skill with that uh, first attack, or you want her to go last. And that's usually the best one because then it's just less motions, less attacks, which means a faster run in general. And then we have Archmage Helmet. Now, this is actually not my first choice of a champion to bring in here, but we needed some extra buffs on our team in order for Seer to fully nuke. And Archmage, I think, is a really good choice for this. I mean, the buffs that he's bringing are different from everybody else's, and that's helpful. Plus, he's going to make sure that we keep our speed throughout this run, which is going to help us once we get to the boss. Now, again, had to boost his speed up to make sure he's faster than Seer, so 235 works really well. Um, I did try to put a little bit of crit rate, some crit damage, and some accuracy on him. We actually don't need the accuracy. I didn't mess with this build all that much. If I were really trying to fully maximize it, we would want to build as much attack and damage as possible just to help with the dragon once we get to the boss there. But honestly, that's not going to be our main damage source. It's not going to make a huge difference or maybe even any difference at all. So I didn't bother wasting quality gear on this champion when I didn't need to. And so he's doing the job that we want him to do, and it's proven effective for us. 
And then very last is one of my favorites in this. It's Ghostborn. Obviously, he's going to land that decreased defense without fail because we don't need accuracy for it. And I didn't build it on him. We were able to build more attack and damage on this champion. Obviously, we can always continue to improve that. But with that 232 speed, it can be a little bit challenging. But his job is mainly just to deal damage and to get that decreased defense out. He also brings that increased attack buff, which is very helpful. This is why he's kind of ideal for this boss. So when you're taking down Dragon or really any of the dungeons, making sure that you're speed tuned and focused in your approach to the waves is really helpful. Even if you can't, you don't have a big nuker like a Zavia or a Seer or an Elinaro or whomever that can wait, you know, nuke the waves in one shot. You don't necessarily need that. It's still speed tuning will help you a lot because what you want to do is you want to know when the skills are happening. You want to make sure you get your debuffs out before your big hitters come in. You want to make sure that if you're speeding your team up, that those champs are going fast so everybody actually benefits from that as soon as possible. You also want to make sure that when you have CC in there, which if I was running a more traditional team, I would definitely want to have, you want to make sure that that CC is coming in before the enemy starts taking their turn. So, you know, you just got to make sure that your team is synced up so that you can get through these waves a lot faster. I could have taken the original team that was shown here, and we could have definitely dropped the time on that just by syncing up the speeds a little bit better. I think we could have actually dropped those speeds of that boss run by probably a minute or two, in all honesty. But at next level stuff, we're talking about having even champions dying to help speed up the run, which is kind of what we end up having here. So, you know, taking these approaches, you don't have to necessarily take these specific teams or champions, but taking these approaches and applying it to what you have is going to be the key to improving your account. So anyway, hopefully this was helpful for you guys. I appreciate you sticking around. I enjoy these step-by-step -step series, and I'm looking forward to the next one. So till next we meet, I'm the Deadwood Jedi.